welcome to this week's piece. So I thought this was the coolest thing I had ever seen. It's like a little cabinet end table and it was so incredible. It was $9.99 at one of my local thrift stores, which I usually don't go into for furniture because their prices are just horrifying. Um, but this one had enough damage to it that <laughs> I think they're just like, yeah, get it out of here. And the doors were kind of too far in. There was a big hunk taking off of, off of the side. The finish was just annihilated. But there was just so much character and loveliness to it that, I mean, I obviously had to get it. Because just, it's awesome. So cool. So I take this time to go over, figure out what needs to happen to it. As you can see, the doors have been just kind of manhandled, I'm guessing, too much over time. So they go back in further. Later, when I looked at it, it the hinges actually just needed to be tightened up. And that fixed the majority of it. So that was actually a really, really easy fix. But it's mostly surface damage with just a few other little issues that we'll deal with along the way. Now, th this had more spiders in it than my last piece that I found outside. So I had to get rid of those before I could start doing anything because there were living ones in there and I had to get them all out before I left my shop for the day because I didn't want them to make homes in my shop in every piece of furniture that I have in there. So sorry spiders, had to go. And then of course I give it a good clean just before I get started because it just makes my life a little bit easier as I go. This top was so far gone, it was really, really easy to scrape off. Um, if you have just these easy finishes like this, it goes so much faster to scrape them than it does to sand. So that's why I opted to do this. And then of course the little edges there. At this point in time, I was going to paint around the edges because the top is just veneer, it's not a solid piece of wood. But I ended up changing my mind later. So the first thing that I need to do now that everything's all cleaned up and I'm ready to go is I'm going to use this quick wood, which is a really, really hard epoxy. And that's what I'm going to fix the corner with. Now, if I was going to keep this wood, I would do a wood repair, which are really, really easy. You just have to shape the wood and glue them on. You have to make sure that you match the wood up and all that kind of stuff. But since I'm painting this, that's not necessary. So I just form a corner with this epoxy putty. I make it slightly larger than the corner needs to be so that I can go back in and sand it to the right shape. But it's super easy to work with and I just find that it's less stinky than say Bondo or something like this and I can just keep it cut off the amount that I need and ready to roll. Um, I don't use this stuff all the time. I only use it for things like this where I know that I need something really really hard and durable. like. I wouldn't use my Durham's putty or anything for this much of a corner. I might use it for a smaller section, but anything this large you want a really, really good repair on, so you want to use your harder materials. Again, this would have been a really good option for just a piece of wood. Next, I'm going to go in with my Durham's putty, which is, again, one of my most favorite putties to use. It is very, very hard, but it has next to no smell, and you just do it with water, so it's lovely. Um, like I said, at this point, the edge around the top I was planning on painting, but I decided in the end that it was fine to just stain it with everything else. Um, so typically if I'm going to stain something that has to be filled, I will use a stainable wood filler, but again, you'll see later on. For right now, it's filled with Durham's. And then I had two little chips taken out of the top part of the veneer. So all I'm doing here is cutting out some straight lines so they're not jagged with my chisel. And I'm just doing a little triangle shape because that's the closest to what it was naturally, so I'm not taking out too much wood. 
I just place it as close to the edge as I can, get a perfectly straight line so that it's easier to work with. Clean out all the little pieces that you have in there. And then I'm real quick just going to do the same thing to the little piece on the corner. But then here I'm just going to take a small piece of paper and I'll lay it over the surface. There's a ton of different ways you can do this. Um, this way is just really quick. So you run the pencil along it, it leaves the shape for you. And then I'm just getting the grain right here. So this piece of veneer is from an older piece, so it still has stain and finish on it, which I'm not worried about it. It's going to be slightly proud of the surface. So I'm just cutting out that shape. I tape down the veneer, tape the paper over the top of it, and then cut it out with the chisel. So it's the exact size that needs to fit in my little section there. I just do a dry fit really quick. Um, make sure the edges are all lined up and perfect. Um, I do leave it hanging off the end just a little bit because I can clean that up later. And like I said, it will be slightly proud of the surface so I can go through and sand it down. And I'll do the exact same thing on the other repair as well. In this case, I just used my extra strength Gorilla Glue, which is just my wood glue that I usually use. Um, you can use whatever you like. I think I actually would have preferred using hide glue on this. Um, just it's a little bit less gummy when you're doing these kind of repairs on top and it's a thinner glue. So mm, next time I'll probably use hide glue, but this one was out and handy and I didn't have to heat it up. So there's that. Again, I'm just doing the exact same process on the other one. And then I just throw some tape over the top of these to protect it from the clamp. I don't want the clamp sticking to the glue. And then I'll leave these overnight before I work on them at all. Now, once I take everything off the next day, I can go through with a chisel and just very gently take off the little excess part of the end there. And then I'm just using the same chisel to take off the top because it is, like I said, just sitting slightly above the surface, so I'm just going to use the chisel to make it flush. Now I can go in, I'm just using a standing sponge around the edges, and then I'll take my orbital over the top. Um, there were two different watermarks that I knew I was gonna have issues with. Once I sanded, I just wanted to see where I was at with them. I decided that I ended up needing to use oxalic acid, so I did that. I let this sit overnight. I ended up doing two coats of it. It got out the one watermark, but not the other, so I kind of wanted to leave this top a lighter wash, but because of that second watermark, you can even see it, it's a very dark ring. It actually damaged the wood in that area. So I ended up having to go with a dark stain, but that's fine. So again, this is sat overnight. The putty is fully dry and hardened. So I'm just shaping it. I'm getting off the vast majority of it with my orbital and then I can go back and hand sand it to make sure that it's perfect. I'm impatient, so while the top's doing its thing, I'm going to go and give the entire thing a scuff sand. I just wanted to show you guys something fun in my adventures of sanding this out, which was terrible because it's, it's a very penetrating stain, whatever they used, over a very light wood. So um, this is the shelf that was in the piece. This has been refinished before, um, but you can see the notch taken out of here to be kind of like a tongue and groove situation into the shelf, except for it wasn't in there and I didn't even notice these until after I took out the shelf and got into the back. But they had taken a couple trim pieces and set them up and then cut off this end of the board and are now just setting it on top. 
top of, which is fine. It works perfectly. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just always curious, like, was the shelf too low for an item that they had in there? I don't, I don't know why people do this. Um, or there's a little bit of cupping on the board, so maybe um, they were having issues with that at some point. I don't know. I just always find it interesting when you see, like, other little repairs and trying to figure out what they did. But it's a unique way to do it. It's just they just nailed a couple trim pieces on here cut off the board so that it fits and it slides right. I mean, it works just fine. I just think it's interesting when it has like a really good secure way to keep the shelf in. It wouldn't lift or do anything. It would just be set in the grooves. But anyways, I just wanted to come on and show you guys that. So the front, I obviously couldn't use my orbital on. There's too many details, but I do use my chalk mountain sponge. It has a really sharp angle on it, so it makes quick work of all these really tight spaces and everything. So I'm just going to add some bright white to this front little door area so that I can lay down my decoupage paper. At this point, I was going to use tissue paper, but it was too large, so I had to custom print out on a different piece of paper. So it turns out I didn't need to do this white section, but you do want to use a lighter base if you're going to use tissue paper. I'm doing this first because I want it to dry and set up, and then I can go back into the top of the piece and check out what's going on with that. So as you can see, it's fully dried. You can see the little crystals that form with oxalic acid. Um, this stuff is icky to breathe, so make sure you're wearing proper PPE and then I just use lots of water and a rag to clean that all off and then of course I have to wait for that to dry all over again so here's where I'm not using tissue paper <laughs> like I said I had to custom print this one out because my tissue paper was too large but it's fine because it's in a recess and I don't mind that it's slightly thicker paper because there shouldn't be any edges sticking off and I can really secure that little the front section down the middle, those are really, really down tight. And that's all I ever care about, so that I don't have any lifting. And like I said, I couldn't get rid of that one really dark damaged water stain, so. Guys, just use coasters. I shouldn't say that, you guys know to use coasters. Make sure you tell your clients to use coasters. <laughs> so this is just um, oil-based dark walnut. I prefer the water base, but I have this tiny can and I'm just trying to get rid of it. It doesn't matter if they're both beautiful colors. It's, I just like water based products better. So when I'm picking out my colors, I literally look at my papers and see what I need. So I've got Carolina blue, patina green, relic green, Goblin Gray, Iron Gate, which I actually did not end up using, and then Blackboard. And I just look at my papers and decide what I need. And then of course I'm gonna jump around again because before I start painting, I wanna make sure I do all these touch-ups. Like I said, initially I was going to paint that lip in with the piece, but then I was like, you know what? They did a really good job with the graining on the side of it. So because I used my Derms putty, I'm actually just going in with a teeny tiny detail brush and dipping it in my stain and painting the stain on those areas and it looks a little bit darker now, but once you let the stains set up, it actually calms down and you can't even tell that it's there unless you're like really looking for it. Right now we can get into the fun stuff. If you guys don't think the other things are fun, I usually think it's all fun, but it's, it's fine. So, what I'm doing here is just kind of putting a basic color placement. So I've got the Carolina blue there, that's closest to her dress. I know it's very bright, but it's because I will start with a base color and then do layers of other colors over the top of it to get it to match. And I always do this over, I make sure my decoupage paper is fully sealed and has been sitting and is all dried up because if I get any paint on this where I don't want it, it wipes right off. So I keep like a little wet, rag or napkin or something that's a bit damp and then I can just wipe off any areas that I get on the picture that I don't want on there. 
Now you obviously want some paint on the picture, but I like to paint around my edges first and then kind of work the colors in so that I know what the colors are going to be once I get them on the piece. And this is literally just playing with paint right here. I'm picking my base color and then I go back in over the top with other colors that I think would complement that color and make it sink into the picture. And this doesn't have to be exactly perfect because it is kind of framed out and I'm not too terribly worried about it. Like I'm not trying to make it this full thing a scene from the picture. I just want it to look kind of nice and cohesive. And you can see me doing quite a bit of stippling motions and that's because I want that texture of the brush putting the paint on instead of strokes because in parts of the picture it looks very stippled instead of smooth. So that's just stuff that you need to think about as you're applying the paint. And some areas you might want swirling, some areas you might want like full straight strokes and sometimes you just want stipples. I mean even a sponge works sometimes in certain areas and you'll even see me in part of this using a rag because the ragging looked more natural to the picture than the paintbrush did. So you just kind of get a feel for it as you're going. And you can see the colors finally start kind of mimicking the colors in the image. You just have to keep working with them. And I know it looks really crazy at first, like when I put on that first blue color, it's like, that does not match at all. You're doing a terrible job. But no, you just keep going. And it's like, oh, okay. I'm not that terrible. I just, I thought I was for a minute. So I'm gonna speed this up a bit because I just kind of showed you the basic right there. I hope you know that like I answer every single question that you guys leave me and I just try my best to make sure that I hit everybody. I make sure that everything's answered. So if you do have any questions, feel free to leave them below. I have no problem answering them. I think you guys support me so much. It's literally the least I can do is respond to you if you leave a comment on my channel. So please know that if I miss something or if you're curious about something, um, I will answer you. So feel free. But yeah, I'm gonna speed this up and we'll get a little further along. Real quick, I switch over to this small detail brush. If you have to do that, do that. I have one detail brush that I'm using here and I literally am dipping it in all of the paints. I barely clean it off because as you can see, the picture isn't very smooth and transitioning from color to color. So why would my paintbrush be? So I'm just using the tiny brush to get into those little details and then the large brush for everywhere else.
Now, once I get to the outside panels, I don't need them to match up with the picture as much. So all I did was for the bottom part, I did the relic green and the top part I did goblin gray. And then in the middle, I added just a little bit of black because the bear is very, very dark and having the black mixed with the green and the goblin gray just made it transition a little more easily. But even on the sides, I went from the relic green to the goblin gray all the way around. So it was a very, very easy, easy blend. Those two colors are very complimentary. The goblin gray is a, like a tealy, deep tealy gray and the relic green is just kind of like a deep gray green. So they're very, very friendly to each other. It was an easy, easy blend. So since this is my first coat, I have a little bit of wiggle room in deciding how I want this to go. So right now I'm just taking the brighter Carolina blue over the details just to see if I like it. And I absolutely loved it. So I will keep this on the final coat. But this is just a fun thing to do on your base coat when you know you're going to go over it again to do your second run through. You've got, you know, some play time in here if you aren't quite sure how you want to go with it. So like I said, this is the second coat. I'm just going to completely speed through all of it. You can see I'm going right over the top of the little details that I did because <laughs> I was just testing those out. And then I'll do the exact same thing. And I'm just working in layers here. I just want to make sure that I have a bunch of kind of texture and color and depth. So as many colors as you can get in here that you know, this doesn't pop out like crazy, but it's still doing something. And I feel like that's, it's just fun to look at and it adds quite a bit of interest without being too much. And don't worry, we're, we're going to do guilds too, because, you know, it's one of my pieces. Now for the back, since that backer board, I, it obviously wasn't original to the piece. I'm just throwing on some of the old peel and stick wallpaper that you guys saw me do on nightstands a few videos ago. Um, I did this on the shelf and then on the back just to brighten up the inside because it was very, very dark in there. And it's still nature-y, so I feel like it's still kind of on theme, but it just helps brighten up the inside of it. It's a very cavernous space in there. <laughs> Now for the first part of gilding, I'm making a pewter color and for this I used equal parts silver and black and then I added just a touch of gold to warm it up the tiniest bit. So I'm putting this quite heavy all over all of the details and then throughout the framed out portion of the picture. And so I'm putting this on heavier than what I would normally do, well that's not true. I, I put gilding wax on fairly heavy, but I'm doing it heavier here than what I would, because it's so dark, it's safe in my mind. So I'm adding a little bit extra, more than just the high points, kind of going crazy with it. And then the top, I ended up doing three coats of poly on this. And then to seal all of the rest of this, I'm going to be using this peacock blue wax. And this is why another reason it was fine to go heavy on that because the wax will start breaking down the <laughs> gilding wax that I already put on. Now, not too much because I put this on hours earlier, so it's kind of set in there and the piece wasn't sealed, so it's hanging on, but what it's doing is creating a shadow underneath this peacock blue wax. So, sealing with peacock blue wax, it gives it another layer of color and I'm also putting the peacock blue wax on the top to tone the top of the table and to give it extra protection. You guys know that I love sealing with poly and then also putting a coat of wax on. It just, it's like the ultimate protection for people who like to set their glasses on it with no cup holders. Or no coasters, I mean.
And now I'm gonna go in with just the straight silver and just hit the very, very highest points and some of the extra details with bright, bright silver. And because this wax is still wet, it's actually going to soften the silver out too. If you wanna get a full, like, punch you in the face gilding, then you wanna wait till your wax is completely dry underneath your sealing wax and then go on with the gilding wax over the top because they do kind of activate with each other and they don't they're not the best of friends but they can be if you want to work with them that way Oh hi, Taryn and Luke is here with Elegant Upgrades and we've got our finished piece. So it's a beauty. It is with one of my decoupage papers that you guys know all about because I've talked about them before, but it's just the most dreamy, magical. I found this by happenstance. I was really upset one day, a shop that I was going to was closed and then I went into this other one and I found this for $10. And I was like, no way, because I never find anything at the thrift store that's, it's always overpriced. But I just, I could not believe it. So $10 and I got this magical, just most awesome shapes and everything. I love it. I couldn't be more pleased with how it came out and just finding it, I was like, oh, this is so unique. I've never seen this before. So you guys know I like all, moldings and interest so it had it I didn't have to do anything to it didn't have to add it just just had to paint it up pretty and that's a pretty fun that's a pretty fun week so we did a few repairs to the top um, I did a couple different ways just so that you could see that you can kind of get the same finish depending on the route that you want to go with different kinds of repairs there's tons of ways to repair things and <laughs> And it's just, it's fun to see different kinds and different ways to do it. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed the blend. It's a very subtle just because the colors are so similar, but it's just, it's beautiful. I love it so much. Um, I will probably list this one on Etsy just because I think it's unique enough to go on there and it'll be an easier ship. So yeah, thank you guys so much, truly from the bottom of my heart for liking, subscribing, supporting in all the ways that you do. I just am blown away every single day. So I hope you know that and uh, we'll catch you guys next week. Bye. <laughs> yeah, you did so good. I love you too, baby. You're so sweet.